In order to get my model making back on track after moving, I've started to retrieve all of the tools, equipment and materials from my old shed and bring them all to my new house. With a fresh new start and a new workbench designed specifically for my model building, getting everything organised and easily accessible has become my goal. If I'm perfectly honest, up until now, I have always had my tools, model making equipment and other materials in disorganised piles, which has meant that it's been impossible to keep track of what I have or where I've put anything. But getting everything organised has become my goal. Not only will it make my life a lot easier to find what I need, but hopefully it will make my model building much more efficient and professional. Initially this was quite a daunting task. Several years of random reckless abandonment when it came to organisation needed to be brought to an end. Looking at all of the tools and everything else that I needed to organise spewed across my desk, I felt slightly out of my depth. However, I did have a plan. The first thing I needed to do was to gather all of the similar tools together. I started by gathering all of the paintbrushes I had. I then started to gather up any tools I would use for cutting, for example scalpels, scissors and all of the craft knives as well. It turns out that when it comes to hot and cold glue supplies, I actually had a lot more than I thought I had, so I gathered these up as well. I gathered up my collection of small files and combined them with the packs of emery boards I bought as well. Any pens, pencils, markers and highlights were also put in a pile as well. I continued to sort all of the tools into piles of similar based items until my new workbench was pretty much covered with all of the stuff that I used to make models. During this stage I also took the opportunity to organise my various clamps too. Now you can never have enough clamps. After taking notes on everything that I had, it was then time to clear off the workbench so I could start upgrading it. Now one of the upgrades that I have actually added to my desk already off camera was to add a lighting bar and three adjustable lamps above the bench. As you can see, I can adjust each lamp individually and it gives me more light to use when building models and filming. The lamps all came from a charity shop and believe it or not cost me only £15 for all three. However, the biggest upgrade I had planned was yet to come. One in which I installed some pegboards on the back of the workbench. I was incredibly lucky when I discovered free metal pegboards plus lots of peg accessories being sold on the Facebook marketplace. An absolute bargain at £15 for the lot. As well as being incredibly lucky sourcing the pegboards, they actually match the exact width of my workbench too. At 610mm or 2 foot each, all three pegboards add up to 1830mm or 6 foot, which believe it or not is exactly the length of the bench. It's almost like they were made for this project. The idea with the pegboards is that they will be mounted on the back of the workbench and I will then be able to organise and store all of my tools and equipment so that it is going to be easily accessible as and when I need it.
Attaching the pegboards was actually a fairly simple process. I first screwed some offcuts of wood to the uprights I had previously added to the bench. This allowed me to screw the metal pegboards directly onto the frame. I simply repeated the process for each of the uprights, adding additional battens, top and bottom, for each of the four corners for each pegboard to be attached to. After a couple of hours, I was pretty much done. All three pegboards were attached to the back of the desk, everything was nice and solid, and everything was completely level. All that was left was to move everything back into place, and then film it using some atmospheric lighting. Yeah! It was then time to work out which pegs and holders I had, how I was going to use them, and what I was going to use them all for. One of the benefits I very quickly discovered about the pegboard accessories was that there are several different ways of storing items, so you can completely customise how you store all of your tools and materials and everything that you have on display. Using a pegboard means that everything is easily accessible, but at the same time, it is not taking up a lot of space on your work surface. <laughs> so there we go, the upgrades are now complete and the workbench is pretty much finished. I must admit I am really proud of the work that I've done on it and really pleased with how well everything has turned out. One of my favourite aspects about this workbench is definitely the pegboards at the back. Not only do they look really cool in my opinion, but they are so functional and so versatile as well. As you can probably make out, I've actually rearranged the layout of all of the pegs since filming and I'll be honest I'm probably going to rearrange everything again. It's just such an easy to use system. You may also notice that I've added some tubs onto the back of the pegboard as well. I've attached these using magnets which is just how easy and useful a system this can be. Now there are a few things that I still want to finish on the desk. For example this gap here underneath the pegboards I left it deliberately so that if I'm going to have any computers on it I've got somewhere to feed the cables and I can also use it for dust extraction as well. However, just to neaten it up, I think I'll include some sort of brush strip similar to a draft excluder just to keep everything a little bit neater. I also plan on adding some six socket switchable extension leads on the front of the desk as well so that I can have easy access to power. On top of that, I'm probably going to add some extra storage containers underneath the desk as well, matching the first ones that I bought. Although, in hindsight, I probably should have picked some cheaper ones. Now, speaking of costs, obviously you'll probably want to know how much this setup has actually cost me in total. So here's a quick rundown of everything that I've spent on this project. For the wood, for the frames, and also the worktops, I've spent £47.06. The lamps, as I mentioned before, I bought them from a charity shop for £15 for all three. The pegboards were £15, that included all of the accessories. I managed to source these from someone selling them on Facebook. 
The casters that I've used on the workbench are £8.99. Now, if you are interested in buying these, there is a link down in the description. Please check them out as well if you're wanting to add wheels to any furniture. The plastic drawers, I must admit, I didn't go for the cheapest ones. I bought them from B&M stores here in the UK and they cost £22 each. Yeah, ouch. Um, probably could have saved some money there, but I'll be honest now that I've bought them, I want to keep everything looking nice and uniform, so when I get some more, I'll be getting the same ones as well. With regards to the screws, I had a bunch of screws still left over from previous projects, so I didn't include the cost in that, but maybe five pound or so, uh, but I've not added that into this total here. And I also managed to source a nice seat as well for free. Don't you just love Facebook? So all in all, the whole project has cost me 130 pound and five pence, which it may sound a lot for a bench or a desk, but to be honest, there's so much that it could have cost me on top. Uh, I'm really happy with the results. Plus also the fact that I've been spreading the costs over several weeks, so I've not had to pay it all in one lump. So now my workbench is complete, I must admit I cannot wait to start using it, working on projects for the channel. If you are interested in seeing any projects that come up, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to check out some of these projects I've already been working on. And in the meantime, hasta la vista, I'll be back.